Hello, uh, happy new year or happy new year's eve. Lindsay here, the frugal crafter. Uh, we're live and I'm so rusty because it's been like two weeks since we've been live streamed. So if you are watching live, can you please let me know in the chat if you can see my table and if you can hear me, that would be really great. Um, I can see there are folks chatting already. We've got 34 people here already. This is awesome. Um, I know that there's never a perfect time to do a live stream because it's either early or late, but I figured it being um, New Year's Eve and a lot of people getting today off because New Year's Day is on a Saturday, that maybe there'd be more folks that wanted to come along and, and paint or, you know, maybe just hang out and um, forget their troubles for an hour or two while we create a painting. All right. Wonderful. Um, oh, hey, Jacqueline. I received your Christmas card, by the way. It was beautiful. Uh, she can hear me loud and clear. Wonderful. Okay, so we're going to do a um, uh, <laughs> a scene from a walk that I took about a week ago. We had this ice storm and like all the trees were all glittery and glistening. And I did take some photos that day, but I didn't get like photos of this scene. And I loved how the shadows were on the ground. And so I took this reel when I was out walking my dog. And um, so many people commented on Instagram that it would make a wonderful tutorial. And so I tried to take photos, but I could not get another photo like this after that first day of the ice storm. So I just screenshotted my reel here and I'm gonna use that. So the goals here will be to get just a pretty clear blue sky, that really bright, uh, how the sun is just kind of glowing there. Like you can't even see the branches in front of the sun itself, but then also the lit up trees. I'm going to go for that. Um, and then this beautiful pattern on the snow. I think this would be really pretty done in watercolors, any water soluble media, or also pastel. So if watercolor is not your thing and you want to try this in another media, please feel free. I'm going to leave my phone um, right here. So we'll hopefully, I don't know how well that's going to show up, but my, my painting will be nice and big. This is only here just for something for my camera to, uh, so I could white balance it before we begin. And um, we're just going to, we're just going to get going. And at a few times, a few times during the stream, I will take some uh, take a break for questions. So if you are watching the replay later on and you don't want to listen to the chit chat, you can fast forward during those parts. But I do like to be available for questions as we do the live stream. So in case I wasn't clear on something, um, I can uh, um, you know I can clarify during the video. It's nice to have that feedback. Um, and I think without further ado, we will get on with it. Now, the only the only drawing we really need to make here, and I'm going to do it with a pencil so it doesn't run, will be just the line, the slope of the hill. Um, that's really all I, I want to get here. Um, and I actually, even though you usually don't want to put your horizon line in the middle, for this particular painting, it, because the shadows are so strong and so interesting, I do want to get it pretty, at least starting, the top of the hill kind of starting in the middle. So... Um, I just wanted to mention that it's it's not, you know, generally a recommended way to put your horizon line in, but I think for a subject like this, it's going to look really, really interesting. So I'm going to start at the top of the hill about at the middle point, maybe a smidgen lower, and then we're just going to just do a gentle uh, slope. I'm going to stop it uh, right around here, kind of, and then pick it up down here because at this point, we actually have the path going into the woods. And um, I don't really need a great reference photo here because I walk this path almost every day and uh, I know it like the back of my hand. So, so we're just going to sketch in that little path. So I will darken it up. You, I don't want you to darken it so much on your, um, actually make it go up a little bit higher. I don't want you to darken it so much on yours. There's a little creek that goes in through there. Um, but I'm darkening it so that you'll be able to see it. Okay. And then the rest, we're just going to basically um, kind of freehand. I'm working on Hannah Mule, the collection of watercolor paper, and I have that link down below. Oh, and also, I almost forgot, I wanted to let you know that I've just released three new courses in my teachable school. They are anthology collections. So um, what they are is I took every all the tutorials from each year of Critique Club, all 24 from each year, and put them in their own course. Um, so anybody that wants to access those tutorials and but doesn't want to be a member of Critique Club, they don't want to, you know, have a monthly membership, uh, you can access those tutorials for one 
on low price and I'm putting them 50% off this um, for January, the whole month of January. So I've priced them at $60 and this is over 30 hours of content in each of those um, anthologies. So you can get them for 30 and you can pick away at them whatever you want because you will have lifetime access to those anthologies. So that is linked up in the video description with the coupon code. If you want to check it out, the links have the coupon code built into them, but I also wrote the coupon code out too in case you have any issues. Um, so I also wanted to mention that. Now I'm going to use my big watercolor brush here in clear water to wet. I'm going to just start by wetting the top half of my paper. And by the way, a uh, handy hint, if you ever have a photo that you've taken on your phone um, and you want your phone to stay awake longer, simply, um, if, uh, well, I'm going to go show you how you scroll down and see that little gear. You can click on that and then you can tell your phone, click on display and you can tell your phone to stay awake longer. So that's what I do here when I'm working from my phone. I got a hair. My cat was on my table rubbing her face on my brushes and uh, to like scratch her chin and all my color pencils too. So I'm just gonna go down here to this horizon area. You also wanna have a paper towel handy because you will wanna be able to lift off any, um, the, the, any of the, the sunshine there and the tree area. So we're gonna, we're gonna be doing that pretty quickly. Um, I've got my super granulating colors that my friend Rosie sent me here, but I'm thinking that I actually might want to use a larger pan of color because I've got that big brush. I really want to use that big brush. And also I want to make sure that my color is going to lift. So I think that I will actually use some cerulean. You know what? I should just grab my, I should just grab a tube of it and grab, oh my word. I'm telling you, I am rusty. You want to see something embarrassing? This is my bin of blue paint. It's my blue. Cobalt turquoise. We'll go with that. That'll work well. <sighs> yeah, come clean. Come clean on my craft hoarding. Uh, that should be more than enough. And I think I might actually add it in with one of those uh, super granulating colors. Um, I think I'll go with this glacier blue here, which I think does have turquoise in it. Not that I necessarily need granulation in the sky, but I do like some nice texture. I think I might actually add some ultramarine in there too, but I can do that from my big palette. Holy cow, I've got such a mess out here already. So many things. I think that's ultramarine, is it? No, that's thalo blue. We'll just throw some of that on there too. I just gotta make sure I have enough. I don't wanna be stopping and remixing halfway through this. All right. I think that's gonna give us a lovely color. And I'm not looking at the chat right now, so <laughs> so uh, I apologize if anybody has any dire needs at this moment. I want to make sure I can get to that. Um, I can get that sky done. I want to use colors that don't stain for this first for the sky because I do need to lift up the trees. Now, another thing we could do for the trees actually is we could do um, we could force some blooms in there, some cauliflowers, and that would give us a really uh, a really cool effect. So I want to go darker here at the top and then bring it down a little bit lighter as we go. I think I'm going to grab a little bit more. I literally have my palette on the floor, my other palette. It's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, what a pretty color though. All right. I'm going to go into some more of the cobalt turquoise as we work down. And Turner's cobalt turquoise is, it looks a lot more like a cerulean, I think. And then just water here as I bring it down lower. And then a little bit more color in there. I didn't want to do the ink tents on this layer because if it dries on me, I do have a space heater in here. Uh, if it dries on me, it's going, I'm not gonna be able to lift it up. So I want to have that uh, liftability. So there we go. That's pretty smooth. I'm happy with that. But now I am going to do a little bit of a, of a forced bloom, see that? So the, the paper is damp and I'm putting in wet. And you can even wait a little bit to, to get this effect. One especially right over where these trees are. 
Now I'm going to take, because I'm going for a little bit of a cauliflower there. I might need to redo it because it might be too wet. I want to get the sun, that ball of sun out of there. Look at that. Look how well that lifted up because they're sedimentary colors. So if you're wondering if a color is staining, when you purchase a go, well, you'll, you'll just by the basis of using your watercolors, you're going to know what stains and what doesn't. But you can also see when you purchase a color, usually it will tell you on the tube, um, whether it's staining or not. And if you can't find the information online, you can always um, go to a manufacturer's website and usually find that. So I'm actually just gonna wipe out some of that color as well. And then less of that effect over here because um, uh, because the sun's not backlighting all that ice. I actually think I might go a little bit higher with those trees. A bloom happens when you have um, wetter paint on drier paper. So when you break that equilibrium, and that's when you get those ruffle edges. I might be able to do that if I just go in with water here. Yeah, I think I can probably make a little bit of a bloom there. It will take a while to show up, but I can kind of see the edges. Uh, cotton paper is a little bit tougher to bloom than, um, than cellulose because cellulose just doesn't absorb like cotton does. So you do have to kind of help it a little bit if you want that bloom. Of course, a lot of times you're trying to avoid bloom. So that's why cotton paper is really nice because it does kind of keep it. It does make an equilibrium a little bit better. All right, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and, and uh, type the word question in all caps, or you can at Lindsay, uh, Lindsay how do you do that? At the Frugal Crafter, <laughs> and it will give me, it'll uh, pop up an orange bar so I can see. Uh, but I'm going to look and see if anybody's had any questions thus far. I don't want any puddles at this point, unless it's someplace I want to bloom. So I'm just looking at that. And I will see if there's any questions. So if you're watching the replay and you want to skip ahead, go right ahead. Oh, function of light. Thank you for reminding folks to do a thumbs up. That really does help the video get uh, pushed in front of more eyeballs. So yes, please hit that thumbs up if you're enjoying the content. Uh, let me just do lots of, uh, lots of familiar faces. I see Sheila and Jody and Christina and Teresa, Miss Artful Sassy Studios. Oh, I'm, I forgot to look for questions. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. Let me go back and look for questions. Uh, Sheila, I have my paper flat. You could angle it if you want to. I don't, I don't think you'd have a problem. It's not that wet that you'd have a problem with that. Jody loves Turner paint. Oh, me too, Jody. And I recently bought a tube of their ultramarine deep and that color is just like painting with a sapphire. It's so gorgeous. I wish I bought two tubes of it because the price it was like on their super sale and it was like $4 for a 15 ml tube. I'm, I'm going to order another tube when it goes on sale again. And some more of their um, Mars Black. Their Mars Black granulates as good as Daniel Smith. And it's it was $4. I'm like, I'm not kidding you. It's six now. That's a regular. That's their regular Jerry sale price over at Jerry's Adorama. But so gorgeous. All right. Well, I don't think there's really been any questions yet, I guess. So... I'm going to move ahead. And by the way, um, I'm not sure if we have any moderators in yet, but usually we do have a few moderators pop in that um, to help out if anyone has questions. And I see Ian's here and uh, Joe usually pops in. I didn't give him advance warning, though. Uh, so if you do have questions, the moderators will help you out as we're um, as we're going along. So the next thing I want to do is I want to work on these beautiful shadows. And the shadows will start more tight in close to the trees and they get blurrier as they come out. So what I want to do is I want to wet my paper, but I want to wet more wet towards the bottom. And then so I'm just applying the water to the bottom. And I'm just gonna see what I can spread up from that, but not add more water as I go further up. I want to have it a little more dry, or you can wet the whole thing and you can just kind of blot it a little bit up closer. Oh, you know what? I wish I had thought to erase that line. I'm gonna see if I can sneak in and erase that little line. 
straight there. Do I have my mono eraser? Yeah, do I have my mono eraser? Yes, I do. These little erasers are so good. They're white vinyl, so they're not damaging. I do not want to erase where the paper's wet, though, so I'm just going to try to sneak that in and get that little line out. Because I want that snow to be really light, and so that would definitely show through. And I've, like, wet up almost right to it. I need to have a dry brush just to brush the crumbs away. There we go. We're good. <laughs> oh, goodness. So not as wet up here, wetter towards the bottom. If you can manage it, if not, wet the whole whole bottom area. And uh, look at that. I was able to lift up that sky color that was on the, the hill. And if not, you can just kind of blot where you don't want it to be quite so wet. Oh, we're already drying up. I need to re-wet that, actually. I'm going to do the blotting method, I think, because... I'm getting some nice texture in there. We're not going to be able to see much of that once we get our trees in, but... I'm going to soften this little edge while I'm at it. Just with a wet brush. Oh, my cat. <laughs> so many stray hairs. Grief. All right, so wetter at the bottom, a little drier to the top. I'm going to blot it a little bit for good measure towards the top, and then I'll just re spread it. And we've got a little. Random color. Oh, you know what? I set my towel on my ink tents and it picked up some color. All right. I'm going to go to a round brush. Let's see. This is a number 10 round. <coughs> Goodness. And uh, let's see. Uh, you know what? Oh, yeah. We're doing the shadows. I was going to pop into the trees, but I don't need to go into the trees yet. Um, let's go with some of this. Uh, which blue would, is this is, um, I think this is glacier blue. I'm going to try to take it right off the pan. I don't want to have it uh, too watery. And the, the sun is here, so our shadows are going to kind of radiate out, kind of like a sunbeam, which is a, also really interesting. I thought that would be really fun to do on this um, on this painting here. I also want to soften that edge before we get too far. The edge was a little too hard for me. I didn't like that. All right, so we got a radiating shadow. So uh, we will have a tree there and its shadows are going to just kind of come out almost like rays. It's such a fun, uh, unusual effect. You usually don't have the, the sun that's so low through trees. It's not something you're typically going to see. So I thought that's just, I'm not probably going to be able to catch that again. Or if I do, I'll definitely take a photo of it. I want to warm that up a little bit. I'm going to grab some of this galaxy pink, I think it is. The Schmincke granulating, super granulating colors are really um, desaturated because generally your sedimentary colors, the colors that will granulate and not stain are your more um, heavier, you know, they're sedimentary. They, they settle out. They sediment. They're made for minerals or synthetic minerals. I love how this is almost abstract. You will have a little bit of a drying shift, but it shouldn't be too much. And my brush stroke should be wider as I hit this edge of the paper. 
And if it's not wet enough to do that, just press down more on your brush and kind of taper them in. This was such a pretty morning. I kind of grumble about um, going out the cold and walking the dog in the morning, but then you get rewarded with the, like some of this, these gorgeous lighting scenarios. Uh, let's try some of that blue. A lot, and a lot of the colors in the Schmincke Super Granulating line, I've realized, do share um, common pigments. So they do tend to go pretty well together. And also because of that, you really don't need to have all the colors. I would say if there's a particular um, family of colors that you like, maybe invest in that um, <clears throat> that set. They're available in sets and the older ones are available in tubes. Um maybe invest in that set, but then just get a tube here and there if you see something kind of unique. And of course, if you have a, a stash of watercolors, go through what you already have, see what's granulating, and then make your own palette. That's what I did, that's what, that, uh, that's what this palette is. I just went through colors I had, and I took the ones that granulated the prettiest, and I put them in a palette. And uh, that actually was uh, worked really fine. If, if my friend Rosie hadn't shared her stash with me, I would have been perfectly happy with that. Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind. And the thing that I do like about my DIY palette is that the, um, try this with you, uh, is that they're all unique pigments. So I can, you know, mix them together infinitely. And I can also mix them together with my, um, with my dye base colors to get that really interesting splitting apart color. Because when you mix a like a sedimentary color with a dye, they separate much better. It's like oil and water almost, and you get a really pretty effect. I made my mom and sister little palettes with uh, my favorite granulating colors for Christmas so they could try. I don't know. They they both uh, dabble in watercolor, so hopefully they'll enjoy it. You might be like, what the heck? <laughs> it's too cheap to give us full tubes of paint. <laughs> I hope they try them out. I hope they do mix them with their regular colors and see how they're and see how they go. But I thought that'd be fun. I got them also my favorite watercolor brushes, the, the big sets of the um, the mimic and um, ceramic palettes. So I hope they like them. My sister got me this. I got to show you this brush cup. It's so pretty. I, I saw it at the craft fair actually, and I almost bought it, but I'm like, I'm not buying myself things before Christmas. And um, she saw that I was ogling it. And actually when I when we went to leave the the craft fair. I'm like, you know what? This craft fair was really slow. That lady probably didn't sell it. I'm going to grab it, you know, and it was gone. And um, I looked on her website, her, her Etsy shop, which is Studio 207. And uh, I think that's the name of it. That's the name of her pottery. But, um, but they were, she was pretty much sold out of everything. So I was kind of bummed, but I wasn't going to buy anything before Christmas anyway. But I just got me that for Christmas. And I'm like, that is so cool. I love it. Okay, now in the the path in here actually is kind of darker, so I'm going to mix and, and desaturate it. So I'm going to mix some of those blues together on my palette with a little bit of that purple or a little bit of the galaxy pink to make kind of like a just a muted purple color. I'm so glad that the live replay is available after the uh, the live streams because I always feel like I'm kind of like, oh, I can't see what everyone's talking about. I feel kind of feel like I'm missing out on the on the party. But I'll be able to, I'm able to look at it after, which is fun. All right, I'm also going to darken this area in here because this is really well shaded because the edge of the woods, there's like woods all along the side. Man, I gotta say, I'm, I need to get in better shape because trudging through the snow, I've noticed, is like, is very, very tiring. I'm like, I can definitely feel cardiovascular workout happening I think that's pretty gosh it's like it's like uh enjoying the scene all over again I'm soft that soften that edge a bit I might get a little bloom there I'm not going to worry about that because we're going to have so many trees there if you have a bloom it's not gonna it's not going to be a, a big deal that's still damp I could tell because it's cool to the touch I touched the um the um either the back of my hand or any part that's not going to be like oily or sweaty like you know we put hand cream on and stuff don't touch that part of your hand um, but like your wrist, maybe if you don't have lotion on, you could touch your paper and see how, um, you know, how it's, uh, how it's doing. Now I do want to get some of those brownish, um, kind of like, oh, we can't really see from the photo, but it's always, everything is always kind of like, just kind of brown. 
I don't know, and kind of like yellow ochre color and stuff. I want to get some of that in there. And I think I'm going to use some of these colors here. This one, uh, you could, I think it's tundra. I think it's like tundra orange. You could use like um, raw sienna or like a gothite, anything like that. And because it's still a little damp, I think I'm making some interesting textures and blending. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw that in this area here. I'll stop for questions when I get to a point where I'm not dependent on, on the dampness of the paper. Also, get a little bit in here. I'm noticing a little bit of that color in there. Take my big brush lot the excess water but I want it damp hit the edges of that help it spread a little bit and this is all going to be trees in here so if I get blossoms all the better because it's just going to give me some really nice texture oh my gosh I just saw a ten dollar super chat pop up on my screen I don't know when it was left I'm trying to see. Um, thank you, Donna. That's very kind of you. I'm sorry I didn't acknowledge it earlier. I've been too um, engrossed in my painting, <laughs> but that was very kind and it will be very, very useful. Okay, I like, I like what's happening there with the texture. Um, I think I want to go into some of the ink tents as well because I can get a little bit more saturation. Now I am going to uh, be careful. I want to show you something that I did with these blocks in case you have these. Um, I was really confused over what some of the colors are because they look so dark in the sticks. And so I took some just sticky on labels and I stuck them down. I just, I actually trimmed them and stuck them on the edges and just did a little swatch. And I just try to put them back in the same spot every time because it really does help me see what I have. I think that's a color I want right there. Um, so just a little tip there. If you've, um, if you have these, because if you can't see what colors they are, then they're much less useful to you. They're going to work out so much better for you if you can tell what you have. And you might think, well, I'll just pick it up and color it. But it's just, it's a lot better to have that little indicator. Trust me on that. Now, Ink Tense doesn't really granulate, but, um, but I thought it'd be pretty for this anyway. I don't really need granulation in all of this, especially where I'm gonna have all these trees painted on top. I just thought I might get some really nice colors. Actually, a benefit of the ink tents is that you can paint it, and then once it dries, as long as you fully activated it, it's not going to lift up again. So that might be something that you want. I'm gonna try this Naples yellow. And add a few touches of that. I'm really just intuitively painting here. There's, there's not a lot of saturation in the woods. But I do like to push the colors a little bit, make them a little bit brighter. I think I'd like to get a little pink. I can kind of almost see just some pink light happening in there. I'm going to go with this kind of rosy color. Um, throw some in there. As long as it stays white, you can blend it out. So I'm putting it in a few different little places here where I want those undertones. I'm also going to be putting iridescent medium in here. So it'd be nice if they don't blend out too much. I know it looks kind of messy right now, but I'm confident that it will be fine. Oh my goodness, I just saw another super chat. Thank you, Lana. That's very kind of you. Thanks, Lindsay. I love your channel and your teaching. I see a big, I do catch a big, big bar of color out of the corner of my eye <laughs> when they're, when they post those. Um, let's see. I almost feel like a little purple would be nice too. So I'm going to grab a little purple. I put it on my palette first because it's so strong. I don't want to go right into right into my painting with that. And if I don't clean my brush, I can mute it a little bit further too, but I like, I do like some color and I think this is just gonna make the trees have a little bit more life, a little bit more of a Narnia 
quality. See how we got a little bit of a, um, it's not a strong blossom, but a little bit, a little bit of a glow there. That's what I was after. So I'm glad it worked out. Um, could even have a little bit of green. There are evergreens nestled in the woods. There aren't too many around the edges. Some back there. It's already wet on the paper, so it is blending out pretty well. Oh, and I could try some of the greens from the Schminka. And just trying to put a few, I don't think there's any over evergreens in this area. They're all kind of back in the woods a little bit more back here. And I'm just gonna hint at color. Actually, that's a little too much. I'm gonna swipe some of that out. Um, let's see in here beyond the path. I think I would like that a little bit darker. And I wanna kind of maybe introduce some of the colors I'm gonna be drawing the trees on with. So um, this color here is almost like a charcoal greenish color. I'm gonna mix it down with what I have on my palette. Hopefully that's in the screen. And let's put some of that in this little dark area here, and mostly this dark area behind the path. That's pretty when it gets into the wet. Kind of gives it that sense of, of depth, depth of the force going on further. I am being kind of, um, I don't say tentative, but I am being careful with what I put down for colors because I'm not going to want to try to lift those up later. I'm going to want them to stay where I put them. I feel like I need more of an earthy brown. I'm going to try and see what that color looks like. Uh, you know, I don't think I cleaned my brush because that looks very much like that color I just used. Oh no, that is a very uh, interesting purpley gray color. Uh, actually, a little bit of dark in there where the stream is. There's actually a culvert here and you see, I see porcupines in there all the time. It drains out from a, uh, from a high, from this higher level on top of the hill. And then even if you don't see porcupines, you see porcupine footprints going across the path right here. <laughs> it's very cute. Um, oh, well, look at how the color's spreading apart there. Isn't that pretty? You see the purple and the kind of brown, brown gold color. So I don't want to touch that. That's really pretty. So I'm going to leave that be. You do want to use quite a bit of water if you're going to use those granulating colors. So if I want to put, say, a granulating color here, I'm going to wet the area and then I'm going to add that color in. So maybe um, we'll play with some of these greens. We'll put a little bit of the darker color. down low. There's another one and you can almost see like in the dry pans what colors you're going to split apart. This one has like looks like gold and green together. Um, and then Maybe just a little more. I like that yellow in there. I think I want to do a little more yellow, but I'll go with one of my intense colors. Oh, there's this pretty. Um, now, see, this is another example. I'm just going to bring this intense box over so you can see. So this, like looking at this, I would be like, well, that's kind of like an olive green. But if I look at that, it's really a lot more gold. For me, the swatch looks a lot more gold than the stick does. Um, or I wouldn't trust that that was going to be gold when I swatched that when I color used it to uh, paint with. So having this, that paper 
uh, that little swatch on paper really makes me uh, trust that I know what I'm going to get. Whereas before I'd be like, I bet it's going to be greener than it, than yellow if I when I colored with it. But seeing that on the paper, I know, oh no, it's much more, uh, it's much more yellow, it's much more gold. You can also mix the ink tents with the granulating paints, and they should kind of split apart a bit too. That's what I'm going to do to integrate that. And I'm using the blocks just like I would watercolor paints. The only problem I, I encounter when I do that is just if I have to pick up the color later, then it's like, oh no. If it's still wet, then you get kind of like a clean, dirty fingers. Um, and I do notice the more daring I get with the color, the more daring I want to be with the color. So now it's like, oh, I want a little bit more of that purple in there. I'm going to mix it with uh, some of the granulating colors on my palette. It's kind of hard to do a desaturated painting when you're someone who loves color. I just love what's happening there. I was so happy that Rosie shared her uh, granulating colors with me because they're really fun to play with. I don't think they're something I would use every day. But they're so fun in a um, in a project like this. I really want to. I want to get some of that purple over there. Maybe I'll put a dab and just kind of spread it out a bit. All right. What did I do? I did that and I used a little bit of the purple from my palette. Next to that yellow, I think would be really pretty. I also need that to be a little bit pinker, I think. Oh, I'll go with the um, the galaxy pink, I think. Oh, I like that combination quite a bit. Let me add some of that. That's a little too much though. And also a little too grainy, a little too earthy, not grainy. If you do something somewhere and it looks a little crazy, just do it somewhere else and it'll look fine. Ink tents are so fun because you know they're ink based. So when you mix them with um, some of these granulating colors that are that are very much pigment based and even more so sedimentary pigment based, you're going to get some really fun, um, really fun effects. I do not want to touch that area because I'm absolutely loving how that looks. And now I'm just going to fade that out into our sky. Okay, now I think I've managed to pretty much get everything wet in the tree area. So I'm going to take advantage of that. And um, oh, I do need a little bit more snow. Maybe in our little pathway. Much lighter though. Um, I'm going to take advantage of that and use, rewetted that area and I ended up lifting up that color. I'm going to use the, the intense blocks to actually draw. All right, now I think this was a color that I thought that I would go with. And now I'm thinking maybe I would want to do something a little bit stronger. Something with a blue undertone. Um, I'm going to start with this, the uh, more defined tree trunk, and I'm just going to draw that up. Now, these um, would not be permanent until I add water to them. So keep that in mind. If I brushed water over this and I just drew with the ink tents, it's not permanent yet. Um, you can also do this with the ink tents pencils. I am not going beyond the um, the bloom there because I want to keep all those trees kind of like uh, encapsulated in that. 
if you're not getting a sharp enough line on your stick, maybe it's like this and you've, um, you know, you used it a lot, break it. That's not going to hurt a thing. Of course, I said that and I just put crumbles all over my thing. So break it over a trash can or something so any loose crumbles can um, can go away. But yeah, then you can get see a much finer line. I just want to make sure I don't put any uh, branches in front of the sunspot because that will lose the, um, that'll lose my pretty, my pretty, uh, my precious. It'll lose my pretty sun, uh, you know, oh goodness words. It'll lose the flare, I guess. Flare, is that the word? When you have some really bright light thing happening. I'm loving the abstractness of this, which is uh, unusual for me because I'm definitely more representational. But I also say that if you have good quality supplies, you can splash paint on paper. If it's good quality paper and good quality paint, it will usually look pretty dang good. And this is Hannah Mule paper and uh, Schminka and Derwent and Turner paint. So, I mean, he really can't go wrong. Now, there's a really... Um, fun tree popping up over here and it is actually just going slightly above my colors there and I just want to give that a little bit of a dominance because I think it looks really cool. I'll need to drag out those lines a little bit more with the brush because you can see on the dry paper we're not getting uh, as intense of a line. Um, this wet paper is grabbing that pigment and just like muckling right onto it. So you're going to get a much stronger look on the wet. It's one of my favorite techniques, but it's it's kind of um, it's kind of weird because it's not waterproof. If you're if you're doing this on wet paint, you're just drawing on the wet paper. It's not waterproof yet until you add more water over it. However, if you want to lift it out, you also can't lift it all out either because even with regular watercolor pencils, and you could do this with regular watercolor pencils, um, even if you're uh, doing this, if you're drawing with watercolor pencils on damp paper, those lines are going to be are going to be permanent. They're not going to come out. But um, if you don't fully activate these, they're not going to come out. So it's just kind of like a, it's kind of a weird little uh, little thing. Now I want to get a tree right here, kind of going over that little path. So it's up against the kind of the interior part of the path, and it's also going over the path. Oh, I shouldn't have. Oh, here's a compositional note. Um, I'll say no, no, but I would avoid lining things up like that. I shouldn't have this tree lined up with that tree unless I want to put them together and make them one tree, which I really don't. I want them to be separate trees, but I might have to because I've just lined them up too perfectly. And that's going to bother your brain when you look at it. It's going to bother me every time I look at it. So now that became one tree. And I think this one will, I'll swap. I'll make this one be the tall tree over here and I'll bring this one up higher. That'll be the tall tree in the woods. And this will give us some scale. So it's not all lost, but uh, I wasn't paying attention. And that's not what I intended to do, but they, that's how I fixed it. So a teachable moment. Speaking of teachable, don't forget to check out my new anthology critique club uh, classes that I put together. If you've always wanted to enjoy those lessons, but you didn't want to uh, have a membership or a subscription, then uh, you can... You can get each year's 24 classes all together in one lifetime access class. Oh, shameless. I'm shameless. Funny how potentially three kids in college will make you shameless. <laughs> Oh, I love the colors. I love the colors in the background. I feel like all my trees are leaning. They're like falling down the hill. That is not, that is not good. I've got to make some trees. <laughs> I got to make some trees lean the other way or at least be standing straight up. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna tip this up just so I can see it. Definitely got a, a leaning tree problem. My trees did not have their V8 today. Let's put a, let's put some shrubs over here. Just some little scragglers. Oh, I could do some, um, some like kind of olivey green grasses over here too, because it's just kind of like at the edge of the forest. That would look really good, I think. 
and we can have a tree kind of giving us that nice uh, framing effect coming off from the side. I don't need to put too many, um, whatchamacallit, I don't need to put too many branches and tree trunks in here because I can do that with a brush as well. I just want to get kind of the bolder ones in. Hmm. I want to define my path a little bit more, maybe just kind of define that back end of the path there a little bit. I think that helps. Um, and I think I can also do some, <clears throat> excuse me, some little uh, grasses in through there as well. But before I go into doing any of those little uh, branches with a brush, I'm going to need to let it completely dry. So I'm just getting in any of the boulder branches with the sticks right now. I kind of like how that bloom made a bush, so I'm just kind of uh, letting it do its thing and and letting it be. I hope my stomach was just grumbling. <laughs> I hope that didn't show up on the microphone. Um, I feel like I need a little bit more over here. Those are a little too evenly spaced for my liking. I know I can give like a secondary branch, secondary trunk here so I can straighten up this tree a little bit. A lot of times with these trees, when they seem to be like a bunch of branches all coming up from the ground at the same spot, you know, and especially in the woods because it's not all groomed. They just kind of do their tree thing out there in the wild. All right, if you guys have questions, go ahead and put them in the chat and I can answer those while we're letting that dry. So the thing when you do the little swatch, you just got to make sure you put the sticks back in the right place. And I actually had a smaller set of ink tents and I combined them together in this bigger in this bigger box and I had run out of my white and I didn't leave a space for it. So I, and I don't want to just plunk it in because I've already made my swatch. So I don't know what to do <laughs> about that. I have one of the little mixing areas. I've got some, I've got like a teeny tiny little chunk of white left and then like a broken white watercolor crayon in there to, uh, to get me by. But I did order some, they were on sale at Jerry's. I got a good deal. So I ordered three because I like to have those in different sets because they're so opaque and wonderful. All right, I'm gonna look for questions and have a sip of my tea while I do that. Uh, my goodness, you guys are all chatty. I hope the, uh, the, Playing is fine. My my girls are home on winter break, so hopefully everything is nice and clear. Um, they know I'm streaming, so I but I said they could probably watch TV if they didn't have two things going at once, just one thing. Um, oh yes, uh, as Jody reminded us, the free Michael's class that I'm teaching is next Thursday at 8 p.m. And I don't think I have a link in the description here, but I just posted a link on my community tab. On YouTube, if you want to sign up for that, we're going to be using Derwent Chroma Flow pencils on Strathmore Tone Tanned paper. But honestly, uh, you could use a Color Softer Light Fast. The color names match. Or if you have another brand, that's fine too. And if you don't have that paper, you could even use like a brown grocery bag, the inside of a brown grocery bag. You just need like a, a toned brown paper. There's a pattern and everything, so you don't need to know how to draw. It's beginner friendly, and I hope everyone can make it. Um, let's see. I am not a oh, question. What watercolor set? This is from um, Sabrina Wilson. What watercolor set would you suggest for card making or just getting started as a beginner? I would suggest the pretty excellent watercolors. They're by uh, Milang or but they're also called pretty excellent. You can find them on Amazon. They're around $20 for 36 colors. And you really can't go wrong. That would be definitely what I'd recommend for a card maker because you've got 20, 36 pre-mixed colors or you can mix them. They're very transparent, so they mix well. They're just um, they're just wonderful. Uh, and if you want them lighter, if you want pastel shades, just add more water. If you do want more conveniency ones, then you may, um, you know, want to go with a bigger set that's got a lot of colors with white added, like some of the superior folding sets. Uh, but for my, my recommendation would be go with the pretty excellent ones. The, the quality is just really, really great for the price. 
as long as you don't mind adding water for getting pastels. I know that can be tricky for card, like cardstock. Um, so in that case, any of the folding or fan palettes that are out there will do well if they have the pastel colors in them. Um, Lana asks, do you ever use Oxgall in your water for watercolors? I usually don't. Most paints have it in there. Um, it's just a flow aid. So, I mean, I do have a bottle of synthetic Oxgall I can add into my, and I would put it in my, um, like my clear water, my clean water and just use it for wetting the paper and stuff. I wouldn't go in and add it into my paints because it might make it too flowy, but I would just, I would, because I have so many paints, I would just go with the paint that flows more if I wanted that effect. Mary Ford asks, what's on your um, painting this next list for 2022? Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> I have so many lists in so many places that I don't even know. Um, I usually will just kind of look through. I keep um, a, a, many lists on Unsplash of for different mediums and projects I'm interested in. And I will just go for there. I'm usually like in the mood to use a particular medium or paint a particular subject or realize that I haven't done a subject in a while. And then I will um, I will go to that list and I will see what's appealing. Or I might do something seasonal if there's a holiday coming up or, um, or something like that. So I, I'd love to say I'm completely planned out and everything is... Um, it's all planned out, but you know me better than that. That's why the live streams go out like half and like the notification for live streams go out like half an hour before the live stream. Cause like literally that's my, uh, that's my planning. I have a loose plan, but I, I need to leave room. And I've realized this after 13 years on YouTube that I need to have a more loose list that I can, um, make, uh, or that I can inject my daily inspiration into. So as long as I have an, an idea of what I want to use or um, what subject matter I want to do, but that I want to work with, I'm much happier. And uh, um, that's why I'm, I haven't done sponsor videos all of 2021. Um, I made a decision that I want to try to not do the sponsor videos and see if I could, my channel could survive. Um, and I've been much happier and I feel like my work has been more creative. I don't know if anybody else notices, but. All right, I'm starting at the bottom, working back up again for questions. Rhonda asks, have you ever used Daniel Smith granulating medium? Do you like it? No, I haven't. I have the Windsor Newton granulating medium. I thought it was a complete waste of money. Um, so I have not tried any other granulating mediums. Uh, let's see, another vote for a pretty excellent from Kim Henderson. Question from the Bicycle Lady. What paper are you using today? Hanna Mule, the collection. I have a link down below. It's a wonderful cotton paper, but any good cotton paper with a good amount of sizing will work fine too. Um, if, uh, Carmen Nunes asks, if you can only buy one of the Inktense sets, what would you get? Blocks, pencils, or pans? Oh man, um, that's personal preference. They're all good, but all the formulations are slightly different. I would say probably the pencils, although recently I'm using the blocks way more than anything. And I actually really like the pans. I would say if you're really concerned with light fastness, go with the pans. The pans have all been selected for light fastness. And it's, some of those colors are not found in the blocks or the pencils. Um, if you work small, if you like, you know, you like to do a lot of pencil work, the pencils are great. I find the pencils to be the most transparent out of all the products. The blocks are almost a little chalky, to be honest. Um, watered down like this, don't really notice it. But I've they do definitely have more of a chalky, less vibrant effect than the uh, the pencils. So gosh, I really can't say it's personal preference. I'm having a lot of fun with these recently, but I go in phases and I would have to say if I could only have one, I'd probably say the pencils. Um, let me see any other questions that I mixed. Um, Christina says, uh, asks Christina Todd for the Michaels class. Can you make suggestions for prismas instead of chroma flow? Um, specific colors. I probably can't say specific colors because to be honest, the writing on the prism colors are so small and so shiny that I can't read them. So uh, just eyeball it. You'll be fine. Prism colors will work great. Pick whatever you have closest. Plus you might not have the same selection as I do. So I ever just go whatever's closest. It's going to be fine. Even if the color doesn't match exactly, it'll still look fine. You'll just have a different color. And, uh, and that's fine. You can totally, uh, you can totally change it up. Okay. I think I am caught up. So, oh, Teresa Palmer says she doesn't understand that the the, um, the sun is in front of the trees. There's such a flare. Let me show you on the photo. See that? Let me zoom in. There's a 
the sun is so intense and so low and there's all that ice, all every branch is encapsulated in ice that it is glowing. The sun is like bleaching out all of the colors. You can't even see the, the silhouette there. That's why the sun is in front of the trees. Um, uh, Marilyn says, I'm not sure I understand the, the change to critique club, which I was contemplating for 2022. There's absolutely no change to critique club itself. If you are a member in critique club, everything's the same. You still have access to all of those tutorials, but some people do not want to, um, subscribe to a membership and they have no interest in sharing their original artwork for critique. That's what critique club was originally set up for, for people to share their um, original artwork and get feedback and, you know, individual help, which I still do. But in order to make it more valuable, I decided to put uh, two long tutorials a month in Critique Club, which I still will. Um, so we've been doing Critique Club for three years. I have three full years done. And there are people that are missing out on those tutorials because they don't want to be have a monthly membership. So I took each year and I put it in its own course separate from Critique Club, which anyone can buy and then have lifetime access to those tutorials. If you're a member of Critique Club, you still have access to all those tutorials. There's no need to buy that unless you, you know, want to have lifetime access. But as long as you're a member of Critique Club, you still have access to all of those um, those tutorials. This is to serve the folks that want those longer tutorials, um, but they don't want to have a monthly membership and they have no desire to do the, the critique club membership. So it's just to, it's just to give the people what they want and uh, make those accessible to people that don't want to have a subscription. Because I know like for me, I'm more likely to like, you know, say I, I take a book out of the library and I really like it. Um, I don't want to keep checking it out. I'll just go buy that book that I want to have forever and ever. So that's kind of like the same idea with the anthologies. Um, if you want to, you know, not be a subscriber and have access to all those classes forever, you can buy the, the collections. That's all it is. Critique Club hasn't changed. It's just something extra for people who want it. Um, Sheila says, I thought we were on, we only really were supposed to put stuff from the Critique Club in Critique Club. Oh, Sheila, you can... You can, um, well, you're, you've been a member for, for, for uh, oh gosh, why did I name it Critique Club? That's so hard to say. Um, in Critique Club, you can put stuff that you've done for any of the tutorials, but you can also upload in like the monthly prompt and critique list. That's where you put, um, say you're doing a portrait of your granddaughter or you're doing a, just a, a painting of your own volition you want some feedback on that, you post that in the main monthly thread and then you can get specific feedback on that painting. It doesn't have to be just the tutorials that are in Critique Club. You can put um, anything you're working on that you want help with in Critique Club. You can put uh, two paintings a month with your membership. So hopefully that's not confusing. I didn't want to make that uh, confusing. Melissa, yes, I'll probably just put that up on my blog when I put this uh, project up on my blog. Or you can see the reel on my Instagram, but of course it would be moving and not the still shot. Uh, Melissa was asking if I would share the photo. Um, Rosie says, I can't figure out how to get Prismacolor pencils to be as creamy as you say. They seem hard to me. That's funny. I find Prismacolors to be super creamy unless you are using the Prismacolor very thin pencils. Those are awful. They're hard. They're snappy. They're, um, but the Premier, Prismacolor Premier pencils, I find to be the softest. Okay. I think, oh, the Twizzle, this is nine by 12. All right. I think that we're good. Melissa also asked, is that the palette Rosie sent you? Yes, it is right here. The, uh, the Schmincke ultra granulating or super granulating colors. All right. Oh, I hit a button. Pardon. Bear with me. Oh, and I hit another one. Okay. I think I've got everybody, everybody's question. If I missed something, then, um, then let me know and I will catch you in the next round to just repost it. All right. One more question. Marilyn asks, sometimes you ask us to have the watercolor and inky consistency. If the color in your mixing palette is too watery, what's the best way to make it inky so it doesn't go to waste? Um, you just let it dry out a little bit and uh, and use it or wipe your brush off really dry and then pick it up on a really super dry brush and then it will suck up some of the water. All right. Um, I'm going to blast this with my heat tool just to make sure. Oops, it's not plugged in. I was with one of our paranoid faces when I went and unplugged everything. Uh, <laughs> I knew I wasn't going to be in my studio that much this week, so I went and unplugged a bunch of stuff. Somehow better drop a water there. I really love how we have the... Uh, the tighter, skinnier shadows up close to the trees and then the fading out into wider shadows towards the bottom. Um, it's little details like that that I think make your painting kind of go to the next level. 
The next brush you're going to need is a liner brush if you have one. If not, you can use a small round. But the liner brush will help us get those, um, those little branches. And also a liner brush has longer bristles in proportion to its diameter. I'll show you that right there. So you have less control, but you get more random effects, which is going to be much nicer for getting the essence of our natural trees. I'm going to go ahead and use the color that I used to um, sketch on the trees, which is this kind of like indigo looking blue. And I'm just picking it up right from the pan. So you can see my brush doing that right there. And I just need to make sure that it is wet enough that the paint will flow off of my brush. I really want to load that up because your liner, you shouldn't have to reload it too frequently. And looking at my trees, I am going to go over some of the branches, but I'll probably just kind of go over the branches later with a larger brush. And I am going to, my brush is too dry. I am going to just um, go in and throw in little tiny branches. I had a little bit too much on there, so it did kind of splurp out. But if you start your little branches on a big branch, on the, like a tree trunk, it'll be fine if you get a little, um, you get a little blob because you can just work that into the tree branch. Liner brushes do not have very much pushing power, so you're not going to resoluble, you're not going to dissolve the trunks or the ink tents that you drew on there because it's just too, it's too, your brush is too soft to do that. So you'll need like a, a shorter haired round, like a standard round will do that. I know my hand gets in the way. These, uh, the ink tense is much, I'm going to mix it out on my palette to make kind of like a um, milk consistency, maybe, maybe more of a juice. Because I want that, I don't want it to have to reload so frequently. Doing little choppy motions because you're not, you're just almost seeing just a little fract fractured choppy motions because of all the ice. I'm going to be using some iridescent medium to really get that glimmer icy look going. Just do little, little choppy motions. Don't paint over the uh, the fireball there. <laughs> it's funny how like how blue um, and how cold the sun looks. You know, the sun does not have any warm orangey glow, and oftentimes in the morning you can get a warm orangey glow. But when you have so much sun, uh, so much snow, you get such a cool temperature in your in your landscapes. It's really, uh, I think the, I think when you paint, you observe more. You'll notice that sort of thing when you're out walking. You still get that silhouette effect, but you've got more color here. You've got so much light bouncing around, reflecting off the snow, reflecting off the ice. Mix up a little bit more of that color. Actually, I think I'll just take that pan right out of there and plop it right on the palette. And use another brush to mix up the color because that's slow going with the uh, little liner. And it's fine if it gets into those sky colors because it's just going to cross pollinate the, uh, the colors. 
And I'm just going to set that brush aside and leave it so that I can uh, pick it up later to do the trunks. Might as well. Even though it's a fat brush, it's got uh, a nice point to it. So so it'll be fine for that. Now, let's see, we had to do a little landscaping over here because we lined up our trees. So I do want to make sure that this one here that's just really showing up, it doesn't have a lot of ice on it. It's just kind of going higher than everything. I want to make sure that tree looks kind of nice and has some detail to it. So I'm, I'm going to uh, spend a little time here with that tree. A little quality time with our standout tree. Funny how something very beautiful can be made from a lot of messy, scraggly parts. Like when you look at a jar of candy or look at a box of cookies, you know, you think, oh, they're so pretty. But then when you go to like draw them, it's like, oh, actually, they, they don't look that great. But all together, they look really pretty. That branch got a lot of hand, but it's fine. I will uh, look for questions in a little bit after I got these branches done, I think. So if you posted a question, I will uh, scroll back and try to find them. I love the randomness you get from the from the um, liner brush. Get some more little little choppy strokes coming up in here. water this down a little bit. I don't want it so dark. And I'm going to do some lighter little flicks up here. It looks dark, but I think it's going to dry because I added quite a bit of water to this. So when it dries, it will be a little bit lighter. Now for the next step, you'll need um, either iridescent medium or metallic watercolor, like pearl metallic watercolor. Or you can take like a uh, pearl mica powder and you can mix it with um, some gum Arabic. I think over here I might add a little bit of brown. Um, let's see, I'm going to use one that I've already, mm, I think I'll go with, uh, it's kind of like a raw umber color, just to warm it up a little bit and break it apart from the, uh, from the woods over here to kind of give it a little bit of another tone. It's not going to be super different because I'm mixing it in with that uh, indigo color. I 
Oh, I need to move that one over my palette too. Was walking the other day with a dog, and uh, an owl flew right in front of us. It was crazy, and that wasn't all in the woods. That was just uh, around the cul-de-sac, and it was like four in the afternoon. It wasn't even like uh, it wasn't even nighttime. But it was a barred owl. They tend to keep odd hours. All right, I'm gonna use that brush to get some of that. Liquefied. And I'm using a dirty brush because I need that indigo color mixed in. I can just wipe it off before I put it back in my palette if there's any remaining color on there, so don't fret. If you have the Inktense products and you want to weigh in and say what, what product you find the most useful, go ahead in the chat. That would probably be, or in the comments if you're you know watching the replay. That would probably be handy for people. Because I think it also depends on like what kind of art you do and like um, like you know if you're a if you're a high school art teacher, probably the blocks are gonna be more useful because you can use them as paints and you could draw with them. And there's a lot more, it seems like there's a lot more product for your money in a block versus the the pans or the pencils. So I think it just really comes down to what you do. Uh, I'm going to grab some of this kind of like olivey green color. And let's see what it looks like over here. Add some little grasses here at the edge. Whoops. Yeah, a little bit of that uh, bromber color. Look, I need a stiffer brush. Some green grasses for the deer to eat. You know, we see lots of deer tracks. And deer, but not deer too frequently when you're walking with a dog. They tend to avoid. And we'll do some over here. I think I'm gonna switch. Oh, you know what? I have a larger liner. Let me try that one because I feel like I'm struggling to keep enough paint with this intense on that liner brush. But I think it might be because I don't have enough. Uh, it doesn't have quite as many bristles to hold it. This one is a number two. The other one was a number one. Just having that extra bit of bristles, I think, may help. Yep, it does. I love when I'm the first person on the snow, you know, when nobody has made the marks on the snow yet. Which I usually am, surprisingly. All right, and then I'm going to grab a, a larger brush. I was going to just use that big one that I've been mixing with, but I think I want to go down to like a size eight, which is still a fairly good size brush. And get some of that indigo on there. And just kind of go over the sketched, um, the sketch lines strengthen any trunks lost and found though don't be too don't be too um don't be too fussy about it you throw the bigger one in there also just kind of like um 
liquefy any of the thicker ones you drew in there. I mean, it doesn't really matter if you don't, but we will be going in with some iridescent medium. And if it hits a area of ink tents that hasn't been dissolved, we might end up with a little bit of a, uh, a sparkly blue mess. Or it might look totally awesome. We'll see when it happens, I guess. This is fun. I can't believe I'm doing this from a little screenshot. <laughs> But you know what? You you do become more, your memory is better. Um, painting from memory is better the more you uh, you learn to observe. I heard once that Degas, the famous impressionist that painted all of the um, all of the dancers, he would take his students and he would take his students down to the ballet and they would they would look at the dancers, they would watch them, they would observe, and then he would make them go all the way upstairs to his studio, and then they would have to paint them from memory. So I'm like, oh, wow, if you if you observe something, knowing that you want to paint it later, you are going to observe it so much more carefully. You're going to take in so much more information. It's a very intuitive process, too, because I don't have a very detailed photo to go by, so I'm really relying on my memory. Kind of like how I have more linear strokes back here, and I have more, you know, tiny branches in the front, so it helps differenti differentiate the, um, the uh, different areas. And I think I'll go back to the liner and add a few more of the um, the little branches. It's kind of just scribbly, skittery marks. Tip it up a bit and see what I think. Hmm, I think it's okay. All right, so if you have any questions, go ahead and put a question in the comments or at, the, at me so I can see. And I will take a look there while we let that stuff dry up a little bit. I'll also hit it with my heat tool just to, just to be safe. Oh, the chat is going quickly. <laughs> So I'm really looking for that word question in all caps so that I could spot what's a question and what's what's not so um, so I can see. Okay, Sheila says, Happy New Year and thank you for all you do for us. I love your classes. Thank you so much, Sheila. I love having you as a student. It's always nice to see what you post. And Sheila has a blog uh, and she just did a pastel snow leopard that was gorgeous. Um, I think if you just Google Sheila Landry WordPress, you'll find it. Um, Jeannie says watercolor question mark. Um, I'm using watercolor in water soluble intense blocks if that's what you're asking. Um, oh my gosh. Uh, Nosk Nerdy Cat USA says first time here are those dry pastels Lindsay's using like watercolors? Those are ink tense blocks. They are a water soluble um, ink stick. But you could try pastels, they may work. Um, I've used pastels like that. They're usually not quite as vibrant, but, um, or just use watercolors if you don't have those. Um, let's see. Um, Sabrina Wilson asks, what are those brushes that have water in the barrel? Would that be better to use for beginners than a regular watercolor brush? I don't think they're better for beginners. Uh, those would be called water brushes or water tank brushes. And because they can feed out water unpredictably, um, and even if you do know how to use them and you are feed, you are pretty good with them, they still can feed out more water than you want or not enough water. And they're usually the brush quality isn't the best because of the type of brush you need to have, the kind of bristle you need to have to go in those brushes. Um, I wouldn't recommend them. I, I like them okay for travel or for classes if we're just doing cards or something small. 
but for actually techniques, I think you're much better off doing a, um, uh, using a traditional, a decent quality brush and they don't have to be very expensive. Uh, Rhonda asks, which do you like better, the Hemi or the Arctic squash? Or are they about the same? About the same. I think they are the same. I think they're just different. I think they've, they have the same, they probably both had them made by the same factory. And I know that the Light Wish company sells both. So they, and just using them side by side, they seem pretty darn close. I did a comparison between the Arctic's Hemi and the Artsy gouache. My favorite was the Artsy, but they don't sell it anymore. So, um, but they're all so similar. Like um, we're saying like 95% as good as the other, you know? So I wouldn't like go buy the other kind. If you already had one, use what you have, because I think they're all very similar. Um, question. Annette Fournier asks, I don't have iridescent medium, but I have iridescent paints. I might try that in place of the medium. Absolutely. You can use your pearl, like your, the, um, honestly, the, the pearl Paul Rubens paint will work just as well. I just thought this would be a little bit quicker and easier since I have it in a bottle. And actually this stuff goes a long way. My sister had a bottle of the Windsor Newton iridescent medium and she shared it with me. So I put it in a little recycled, um, oh, you know, the infant Tylenol droppers i would save those and wash those out and i wouldn't use them anytime i had to make a homemade ink they worked great uh the baileys say um for the sun rays is it possible to lift some of the paint so that the sun is appearing piercing through the branches absolutely you could do that um probably not i wouldn't use the ink tents if you're going to do that though because the ink tents is meant to be permanent once it's liquefied but for this particular photo, it was that vibrant. So I wanted to go with that. I wanted it to be accurate. And you like, I mean, you couldn't even look at it. It was so bright. Um, Gwen asks, where is the January 6th Michael's template? It's right there on the page. You have to click on the, the word pattern, I think, because it doesn't, it's not like a different color when you're looking at the listing, but it says download the pattern. Just click on the word pattern or click on the word download. One of those will open up the um, the pattern so you can print it off. And like a ding dong, I printed mine out and I, because I drew it, I drew it onto like, um, I actually traced my original artwork because I just drew it freehand because I wanted to make sure I could draw it and color it within an hour's time frame. So I'd have time to teach it in an hour if I had a pattern provided for my students that, um, that I transferred it with white transfer paper onto my tone tan paper. I could have just printed it on my printer and used because the white pencils would have showed up over the printer ink. So man, just print it out, save yourself the expense of the white paper, the white transfer medium and, um, and just do that. So I'm actually going to just put mine right there because I don't have a clean spot in my palette and I want that to be iridescent anyway. So I'm just going to put that right there. Another cheaper alternative to the Windsor Newton iridescent medium is the Blick Studio liquid watercolor in pearl. That is awesome. I make my own like ink sprays with that. It's really wonderful. Now I'm going to use a, I think I'll just use a small round brush because I think my liner might be a little too unwieldy and I'm going to open up my picture again. And I'm just using this as a palette. This is not best practices by the way, but I'm too lazy to get another palette out. So I'm, I'm hoping I've got about the right amount here. And I'm just going to go and start adding this iridescent medium. Now, this is meant so you can mix it with your watercolors and make your own iridescent paints, which it does work. But I will say that you just have pearl mica. That's the only color that's in there. So it's if you use those watercolors on black, you're just going to see pearl. You're not going to see any color. So that's why I do like to use a good quality metallic watercolor. Um, if I'm going to work on black paper or toned paper or on top of other things, because all you'd see is pearl. Otherwise I'm using this on top of the area where I want the ice to be just on its own. It's going to give me a little bit of opacity, but I'm going to still be able to see stuff through it. So this is a product that's really meant to be mixed with your watercolors. Oh my goodness. I should have uh, seen if I could turn those notifications off. And you don't have to be precise. You just, I'm just kind of like picking it up and dabbing it around. And I want that really burst. And that's why I put, that's why I'm using that as my palette because, um, and even though it's not like, it's not recommended. I'm sure Windsor Newton would be like <laughs> typing in the chat. Don't do that. What are you doing? <laughs> but I'm basically just frosting the branches with the candy coating of ice. 
But look at how it glows. That kind of looks like the photo, doesn't it? Isn't that crazy? And it's going to remain shimmery. Now, if you frame it under glass, maybe you're going to lose some of that shimmer, but it's still going to look pretty good. A real fun sketchbook project for sure. And also, this is going to break up some of my solid lines. We want, I, I recommend working from the uh, the uh, flare out and working from top down because that's where you got to think of where the sun's going to be hitting these things. The sun is behind this, this, uh, this eye level behind the trees. So you're getting much more glow over here than you would be getting over on this side. So that's why I want to start here. So far, it hasn't mixed in with any of my intent. So I must have done a fairly decent job at diluting most of it. Oh, I'm just, I'm just digging that. Okay. I'm gonna take some of that and also add it to my little snow drift. Man, you know, I might need to actually do put some more out. I, if I, if I do have to put more out, I, I will get a palette. I'm not going to tempt fate twice here. Oh, I love it. I'm having fun with it. I'm so glad that the folks on Instagram urged me to do a painting of this. Okay, there we go. I did. I picked up some intent. See that right there, there. Don't panic. Turn that into a reflection. We're just going to clean our brush off. We'll spread it out a little bit. And let's just grab a... Oh, oh. There we go. I'm going to blot some, most of that off because it does have kind of a green undertone as opposed to a, a purple undertone. So that's just going to make it look a little bit better. So that's what I was warning you about. And look, we had another little teachable moment. So I know I'll use this palette here. I'll just put a little bit of that medium in there. I'll move that back out of the way anyway. Don't take out more than you're going to use because otherwise it will go to waste. Well, you could let it sit on your palette and dry out and, and re-liquify it that way. But uh, what did I do with that little brush? There we go. You want your brush pretty dry, so you're just picking up the medium. I'm just seeing how much I have left there. I'm just looking at my photo there to see where I've got most of the iridescence. Now we'll start picking it up from here. I do want to have the little bush there to have some ice on it. It was so pretty. Everything was just like a candy coating of ice. I don't want to cover up all that pretty granulation though, so. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go back in with that. Uh, any place you have kind of white snow that's not the shadow, you can go ahead and hit that with the with the sparklies. Using a small brush will also keep you from overdoing it. And I'm going to be okay. So this isn't this is not ideal. Me reaching this far over my my workspace with nothing like to brace my arm on, that's not the best um, practice. So just kind of keep that in mind. Get a like a bridge, artist bridge, or move your move your stuff so you're comfortable. I'm moving. I have this set up so it can be filmed without my hand in the way for the most part. Hopefully. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're working to be comfortable. Because you don't have much control when you're when you're when you're like 
when you're hovering your arm, you don't have a lot of control. This is also going to be less pronounced because we don't have the white behind it like we did where we lifted off the, um, there's testing to make sure I didn't have blue on there, um, like we did behind our, our uh, big area of highlight. So it's just going to naturally be less pronounced, which is what we want. So so that works out. Wow, it's 134 already. Um, there's a little bit of glisten back here. So I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of dab at the treetops. Now, if you wanted a more um, like a snowy appearance on some of these or you wanted them to be brighter, you can go in with like the um, the white ink tents block or the white ink tents pan paint or any gouache that you have. White watercolor probably won't be uh, opaque enough. And then you could do the glisten on top. You could, you could go ahead and add that over it. can also do little bits of the path if you can see that. And if you want just a, a very, very sheer wash of some um, some shimmer, take a big brush, water it down so that you don't have a big concentration. Don't really water it down. So you just have a very, very, very faint. Just like how we watered, how the paint was more watered down and faded out as we got away. And then you can add that here. You just want the more concentrated sparkle towards the top. So at this point, I am going to see if you guys have any more questions. You can go ahead and post them in the um, in the chat. Obviously, if you're watching the replay, you can post them in the comments section. And I will uh, I will check that out later. And then I can decide as this is drying, I can decide whether to add any white paint or not. I'm kind of leaning towards no because I kind of like the subtlety of this. And I think adding a whole new texture might, um, oh my goodness, my picture <laughs> we went sliding. Um, I think I probably won't, but um, but I can kind of let that dry and think about it. So let's see if there's any question. Oh my gosh, somebody left a, left a super chat. Let me see who that is. I am so behind here. Where'd that go? Oh my gosh. I cannot seem to make my mouse work. Thank you. Oh, it's Marty. Marty Owens. $20. Man, thank you. You're a starving artist too. What are you doing? <laughs> Marty Owens from Owens Art. He has some of the best tutorials and um, artist reviews. Oh my gosh, art supply reviews on his channel. Before you buy anything, check out his reviews because it'll save you money. Or it'll cost you. Let's face it. It'll cost you money. It costs me money every time I watch Marty's tutorials. But um, I've actually even messaged him on advice on products that I've been like on the on the verge of buying. I'm like, what do you think of this, Marty? And he'd be like, not a fan, Lindsay, or or go for it. <laughs> One of the other great enablers of YouTube. Thank you so much. All right, I'm gonna look back for questions. I'm starting at the bottom, scrolling back up the list. So hopefully I don't miss anybody. Um, Creative Phenomenon Art says. I just received oil pastels for Christmas. Can you do a video with the medium? Yes, I can. And I have 
I do have some oil pastel tutorials on my YouTube channel, not a ton, but um, yeah, I totally plan on doing more oil pastels in the new year. I really enjoy oil pastels. Uh, let's see. Sabrina asks, what's a cool... What's a good paper cardstock to use for mixed media for card making? Stamps, watercolor, color pencils, and maybe markers. Um, I would say I would go with Bristol. And you can find that at any art and craft store. Strathmore makes it. Um, Canson makes it. I've I've had really good luck with most Bristol I've tried, but it's very smooth. It can take most mediums, even watercolor, even um, alcohol marker. It's got a nice sizing on it that prevents it from breaking down as you're working on it. I would recommend that. Because you you know it just it's kind of gives you the best um, the best of all worlds. It's not going to be the best marker paper or the best watercolor paper or the best colored pencil paper, but it does a it does a really good job on most things. And then if you find that you love colored pencils more than everything else, then you could invest in a paper that um, meets your particular preferences, or vice versa for any of the other mediums. Um, let's see. Oh, I guess it's midnight. I guess it's 2022 some places. Um, so happy new year. If you're watching this and your day has switched over to tomorrow, that's awesome. Oh, Christina said she went over to my Instagram, took a screenshot of the reel. So she had a photo just like mine, but I will put, the, I will put that on my blog. It's not going <laughs> to look at this. I mean, I'm just like, so uh, it's going to have all this other stuff on it too, because I didn't think to take a still photo. Uh, Twizzle says, look, paint on the underside of Lindsay's arm. I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'm really not. Oh, so happy new year's. Happy new year from India. I bet it, it must, it's probably is new year by then over there. I don't know. I never can figure out the time zones. The Baileys say, I actually giggle like a child as I watch you paint. It's so much fun. And then you do something like the iridescent paint and that's unexpected, an unexpected wow moment. Thank you so much. And guys, um, don't run out and buy anything just because you saw me use it. Look in your stash because you may have like a set of watercolors that have pearl, like a lot of the, um, the Prima and Davenport and uh, Mungio, a lot of those watercolor sets that are coming out now will have like a pan of gold and a pan of pearl or a pan of silver. That pan of silver or the pan of pearl will probably work just fine for this. So you'll be surprised what you have when you really get to know what you what's in your stash. Um, it's interesting the different products that come out and what they add to like modern watercolor sets nowadays. Well, let's see. Oh, Owensar did leave a comment. He said, hi, Lindsay. I stopped by to say happy new year and love to you and your beautiful family. Thank you for everything you do to brighten our lives with your art and work on YouTube. That is so kind and sweet. Thank you so much. I don't know if you're still here, Marty, but, uh, but thank you very much. Um, aesthetic aesthetic i hope i'm saying that right it says there's derwent pastel pencils watercolor and intent ink tents which are good for shading and doing more realistic drawings ah uh, i would probably i mean derwent has a pencil for everything and i would say if you want to do realistic drawings i would just get their graphite set um I mean, really, for realistic drawings, you can't beat graphite. It's uh, so easy to handle. It's not expensive. And uh, you can do so much with it. That would be my recommendation. My pastel pencils that I have from Derwent are, are older. It's before they started doing the swish on the end of their pencils. And I think they kind of dried out because I have I struggle with those. But, you know, you're not going to like every pencil Derwent makes because they make a pencil for everybody's preference and we're all different. Now, I think I'm just, um, a Mac asks, can you use your good brushes with ink tents blocks? You can, um, as long as you're not scrubbing hard with them, ink tents products are going to feel a little drier. They're, um, they're very thirsty. It almost feels like you are putting water on a pastel, like a, a chalk pastel or a chalk. So it can feel a little abrasive, but I haven't noticed any damage using them that way. And I've used all of my 
I've used my, my, these are my favorite brushes. They're the Creative Mark Mimics. And um, this set is what I use every day, even though I have more brushes. I actually even bought myself a backup set when I was buying the ones for my mom and sister for Christmas because um, they were on such a nice sale. And I use this particular set every day and almost for the past, like, I don't know, seven years. And I've, the only brush that's gone a little bit blunt has been the number four round, but I think it already, that one is not a really pointy one. I haven't noticed any damage, so I wouldn't worry about it. But if you're finding that you're struggling to get enough color, it could be a brush is, is so is too soft for the medium. And in that case, go with a brush that's got golden hairs, these golden Taclon brushes by whatever brand you have. Those are going to be a little stiffer and they're going to grab more color. They're going to let you stir up more color. So you'll save wear and tear. Like remember when I was using the liner and I had to go in with a bigger brush to get the um, to get a nice puddle of pigment. I did that to save wear and tear on my liner. So you can do that at any point too. So, I mean, you could even have a real cheap brush from the dollar store that you use for like mixing up a puddle of paint if you want to save the, um, if you want to save your, um, you know, your wear and tear. It's like, you know, you have a Corvette, but you're not driving that on a snowstorm, right? You're going to drive the old pickup truck and save the Corvette for when you've got good weather or some fancy car. I don't even know what fancy cars are. So, <laughs> oh, Kathy Bobcat Design left a super chat. Love all you do. Thank you very much, guys. This is too much. I really appreciate it. That's so very kind. Did that just come through or was that? Oh, that was, um, that might have might have been before Marty's. Um, so I apologize for not acknowledging you earlier. I was trying to make sure I didn't mess up my painting, but thank you very much, Kathy. That's very kind. Um, someone just, uh, Jody P just ordered Derwent drawing pencils. Yes. Those are very nice. Those, those would be nice for realistic drawings too. It's a very, but you know, any color pencil is going to be more difficult to blend out and to get gradients and plain old graphite. So just kind of keep that in mind for the person that was asking about the, um, for realistic drawings. Um, let's see. Norma McClooney asks, when the ink tents dries on the palette, can you reconstitute them like you do watercolors um, and use them again? Or do they become permanent on paper? only on paper. Um, Norma, yes, like any ink tents on my palette, I can reconstitute just fine. But once it's, it needs to be on paper or fabric to become permanent. It's not going to become, otherwise, once you wet your brush and you touched it to the palette, the, the, the block, you wouldn't be able to get any more. It would seal it over. And that's not what happens. It needs to have some sort of absorption. It's like, um, think about fabric dye. Now my palette might be stained. It might get stained for the ink tents, but it's not going to be, um, permanently like that that it'll wash off it'll it'll come out but if you have paper or you have fabric it's going to be permanent on that like I did face masks with the ink tents worked perfectly um once it's fully dissolved on a porous surface that's that's when it comes permanent it will stain for sure if you've got like a white table and you're like you know painting on the table and you go to wash it off it's going to stain but um you know, you could reconstitute it on your palette and use it again. So poor, having a porous surface is the key. Um, okay, I have caught up with those questions. I'll see if there's any more at the end. Um, oh, Michelle Thumb also put a super chat up. My goodness, you guys. Uh, thank you, Lindsay. You're a great inspiration. Michelle, that's very kind of you. Totally unnecessary, but very much appreciated. Thank you so much for the super chat. Um, wow, 236 people watching. This is crazy. Thank you, guys. Remember, you can catch the replay if you want to see how the painting started out and you want to paint along. And obviously, if you're watching the replay, you can pause anytime you need to. Uh, Twizzle says, where do you get a mimic set of round brushes only? Um, both of the sets that they offer have flats. So if you want to get just the round brushes, um, just buy individual round brushes on Jerry's Artorama. That would be, I think they're, they're a, a house brand of Jerry's Artorama. So I think you can only get them there and on Amazon, but it, you're buying them from Jerry's either way, either way. Um, sometimes Jerry's does a buy one, get one free sale with the mimics so you could hang on and wait for one of those sales i don't think you can mix and match though i think it's a free of the exact same size so if you have a friend that you want to split with or if you want a backup set that's the time to do it uh 
I'm just scrolling back from the new questions. Uh, Horsewoman2000 says, hi, Lindsay, what size paper? Beautiful painting. It's a nine by 12. And I did link up to the supplies I'm using in the video description if you are looking to get some for yourself. I would say for the ink tents, I have this set of 72. I don't think you need that many because a lot of the colors are very similar. You can see on my swatches, and that's why I recommend doing the swatches. A lot of the colors are very similar. Like they might even make, be made by the same pigments. So I would recommend like a 24 or 36, probably a 36 that would be ideal if you want the most color variety. I don't think you need the 72 set um, unless you're going through them, but you can see I've had this set for years and I mean, I barely made a dent. I mean, I've used up the white and I had to replace that, but I mean, I barely make a dent on the other colors because they go so far. Um, Marty asks, uh, Owings Art asks, did you spray the page with water? Lindsay, I'm sorry, I missed the first part. I wet it, I wet the, um, and you can catch a replay, but I wet the, the top half over the, the snowy ground with water and then um, painted that. And then I made a, a on-purpose bloom there so I'd get that glowing tree effect. And then when I was ready to do the bottom part, I wet the bottom part. And then I tried to keep it a little bit wetter at the bottom so my um, so the shadows would fuzz out a little bit more because they're further away from the light source and the, thing cast, the trees casting the shadows so you got more of a diffused look as you got further away. Um, and let's see. I know I, I get, I get like nosy and I'm seeing people have conversations back and forth. <laughs> um, Marta says, would you add a metallic gold? I wouldn't for this because the color scheme is so cold. It's a cold day. It's a cold um, color scheme. But if you were doing like a, like a uh, uh, desert, and you wanted like that glowing sand, totally. Gold would look awesome. If you were doing a sunset and you had those brilliant golds and um, brilliant oranges and reds in the sky, gold would look amazing. Like I'm thinking of when the sun sets over by the pond, um, you, and that, that sun is super low. The sun is like so low in the sky, it's almost setting, but it's everything is pink and gold, gold would look great for that. So use the um, the reference photo you have or your own experiences as a guide of when you would use gold or when you would use pearl. Pearl is neutral. Um, silver would be a little bit cooler. The pearl, pearl, the pearl is pretty neutral, but it's not going to give you a rich color like gold will. So, you know, go by what you um, like, what you see. And try to match the color temperature so that you've got, it doesn't look discordant when you're doing it. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's a question here. Dee Dee says, can you do a video on different ways to hold brushes and pencils? I see you holding them different ways. Oh, I never thought about doing a video for that. I do do a section in my essential tools and techniques for watercolor painting, where I literally go over how to hold a brush for different effects. So if you're in that, if you're enrolled in that class, check out that lesson on holding a brush. Um, but that's something to think about for sure. Um, I think I have done, I, maybe on the brush, I did a, a brush video where I think it's called like, what brush do I use or something like that, that go over different brush strokes, I believe, and might have that a little bit, but um, I never thought about doing that. It's so funny. You don't think about the basics when you've been painting for a while. Um, Christina Tuck says Bristol smooth or Bristol vellum. vellum. Um, you can use either. I'd probably go for the smooth if you're going to do markers. It might be a little more versatile, but honestly, either I think will be fine. Bristol vellum isn't super textured. So, um, you know, your preference, do go for your preference. I know I personally prefer a more toothy paper to a smoother paper for colored pencils. And I know that's unusual, but I think it's because I tend to review a lot of budget pencils and you get better results on our t uh, uh, rougher paper with budget pencils. Um, oh, Melissa, thank you so much. Um, she said that Kathy Bobcat Design also left a $20 super chat that disappeared. And I scrolled back and found that. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Um, uh, I'm just not used to them uh, popping up like that. <laughs> and I do want to make sure I acknowledge everyone. I appreciate everyone that came to to join in today on this last day of 2022. First, uh, last day of 2021. I'm getting ahead of myself. First day of 2022. Uh, oh, Mary Ford also let me know. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm. It's it's keep up with. <laughs> But I do, but is, but I do want to acknowledge. Okay, I 
think I've caught up there. And now let's see, am I going to leave this just the way it is? I think I'm going to leave it the way it is. I got a little blob of medium there. I'm going to flatten that a little bit, but I don't think I need to remove any. Sometimes, I mean, I haven't used them in a while and it's got, it got a little chunky, but let's just tip it to the light. You can kind of see the subtle shimmer and sparkle. Probably that's going to drive my white balance crazy on my camera, but I think that's really effective. I think I'm going to leave it the way it is. Um, if you like, there's no clumps of snow on the tree either. So I think the iridescent medium on its own is a better use of, uh, is, is better for this painting. But if you had um, really snowy trees, you might want to do either masking fluid ahead of time to preserve the white for the snow or use some white gouache and then let that dry and use the iridescent medium on top. I wouldn't mix this with an opaque color because when you mix metallics with opaque colors, it like coats that mica with the opaque paint and you lose most of the sparkle. So brushing it on over top will let you conserve your iridescent medium and also give you a better result. So just kind of keep that in mind. Maybe you're doing this, maybe you're an acrylic painter and you're like, oh, I'd like to do that with acrylics. Paint it with acrylics. And then when that's dry, go over it with a um, iridescent medium, like an iridescent acrylic or a pearl acrylic. But um, I wouldn't put that on until the end. Otherwise, you're just going to waste it mixing it in with the colors. It'll dilute your white and make it more sheer. So you're not going to get that opaque white. And then you're also not going to get the sparkle that you want. So use it on top for the best effect. And uh, then you can even varnish that painting if it was an acrylic and you'd still would keep that iridescence and everything would be glossy if that's what you wanted to do. Um, all right. So I think the painting is done. I'm just going to sign it off camera, but I will hang out here for a few more minutes um, to answer questions if you're watching live or if you're just, you know, want to virtually want to like, I don't know, <laughs> If you want to party later and, and check out the chat, that's that's totally fine. I've got like cord of my heat gun wrapped up in my chair. Okay, so let's start from the bottom and scroll backwards and um, and see if I've missed any questions. Mary Ford says the painting is gorgeous. It's alive with the colors of winter, and I feel like I'm experiencing the weather and temperature there. Well, I apologize if you feel like you're experiencing the temperature, the temperature, but. Um, but the weather is pretty. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't too cold today when I took the dog out. Um, Joy asks, have you tried Fabriano 25% cotton paper? Would it be as good as 100% cotton? It's not as good as 100% cotton, but it is a great paper. Um, I have it both in cold press and hot press. I would say the hot press is very much like a Bristol uh, with just a little bit more robustness. I use a lot for stamping and if I want a watercolor. And uh, it's it's the it's very smooth. It's very smooth, almost like cardstock. Very similar to the Arches Hot Press watercolor paper, which I find to be too smooth for my liking. I prefer the like Paul Rubens Hot Press paper because it's got just a little bit of tooth, or like the Fluid One Hundred. Um, is it the Fluid One Hundred? The Fluid One Hundred Percent Cotton Hot Press paper. I prefer just because it's it's not slick. I find Arches and the Fabriano to be very slick. Um, the Fabriano Studio. But uh, yeah, it's it's great for a kind of fool around practice paper. Um, it's not as durable. You can't scrub up like you can on 100% cotton. And it's not going to keep a complete equilibrium of your water. Um, it's going to dry a little patchy. So you will get more blossoms with that than you would. It's not good. Your wash isn't going to dry patchy, but I mean, like you'll have shiny spots and dull spots when, as it's drying. So you're more likely to get blooms on that, but it's a good paper. I think it's for the price. It's, it's totally worth it. Oh, and happy new year to everyone. I'm getting happy new year wishes, which is so nice. Um, Teresa says the mimic brushes are more economical. If you buy the $35.99, $36 well, set on Amazon, you get a few brushes that you think you'll never use, but sometimes they come in handy too. Absolutely. That one has like, I don't know how much this brush costs on its own, but that's in that set. These two brushes I think would cost more than that whole set. I use these all the time. Even if I'm not using it for painting, I'm using this for brushing crumbs off of my eraser crumbs off my drawing. So, um, totally worth it for those two brushes, but then you get like a, a 12 and an eight round and a number two liner and a four and a one round. So you do get a great assortment in that set. And it's not like these wear out, you know, I mean, I've put them through their paces. So it's not like you really need a backup set unless you have like two rooms you paint in and you want to have, or one to travel and one to keep at home. Um, a lot of uh, recommendations for the mimics which is good. I love it when other people love the things that I love because then I feel like really good recommending them. 
All right. I think I've caught, uh, I think I've caught up. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining 253 people here. Wow. I think that's, uh, we haven't had a group like that in a while. So I'm very thankful for that. And a lot of people are off work today for the holidays. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Maybe get a little painting in. Um, I had so much fun painting this. I'm really happy with how it turned out as well. And if you're interested in any of the Critique Club anthologies or Critique Club itself, Critique Club is always is, is how it's always been, $5 a month. You have access to all of those classes if you're a member in Critique Club. But if you don't want to be a member, but you want access to those lessons, you can purchase all 24 lessons for each year if you want to and save 50% off during the month of January, starting now uh, with a coupon code in the video description or by clicking one of those special discount links. Um, I just wanted to make it available for however you wish to consume your art content so that way nobody gets left out if they want the class. Um, if you're a Critique Club member, nothing changes in Critique Club. Critique Club's how it always is and how it will carry on for the foreseeable future. So um, it's just something extra for folks that want it. That's all. And I always like to, whenever I release something new, I release it at a discount. So my current subscribers and um, current students get the best price ever. I hate it when I buy something, when it just comes out and I pay top dollar because I really want it. And then the next, you know, six months later, it goes on sale. You know, everybody hates that feeling. And I don't want anyone to ever feel that way when they are purchasing something from me. So that's why I make sure if you're somebody who already follows me and subscribes or is a current student, you get that best price. So I always launch my classes, no matter what it is, for the lowest possible price for half off because um, because you deserve to get the best, the best price. You've been here all along. You've, you've paid your dues. You've stuck through me through thick and thin. So I appreciate that. <laughs> um, but, uh, but that's all. Um, like I said, happy new year. I hope you have a very safe celebration. If you're going, um, if you're going out, please be safe, get a designated driver, call an Uber, um, or stay put. It's Cause you know, the most important thing is that you make it into 2022 healthy and happy and safe. Thank you very much. If you have any questions afterwards, or if I missed your question, please post it in the comments and I will get back to you. I'll check the comments later. The replay will be available and I will post the reference photo on my blog, thefrugalcrafter.wordpress.com. Um, such as it is, it's a screenshot, I know. <laughs> but um, if I get a chance to capture those perfect conditions again when I'm walking out, we'll snap a real photo of it so I can replace it. But, um, but you know, it's kind of fun to go kind of mostly from memory because you have kind of a shoddy photo um because then it really it forces you to almost paint the feeling instead of painting the actual thing which i think is something that i struggle with being more of a representational painter and not an abstract painter um so it's kind of fun to uh to kind of see how the other half lives i guess um and with that i will say farewell and uh, one more happy new year and also happy crafting thank you everyone for joining we'll see you next time bye